In this session of the System 6 training videos, we'll be exploring the Sport Loader program. Sport Loader is the first application or program you see once your System 6 has completed the boot up process. Sport Loader is the main menu for the System 6. It launches the individual sports, it provides system diagnostics information, facilitates software updates, gives users access to file management, and handles the proper shutdown of the timer. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll find six boxes with various labels on them. To the right of each of these boxes, you're going to see the unlabeled keys, which are referred to as the soft keys. If you're new to the System 6, you may want to back up and view the timer introduction video first in order to kind of familiarize yourself with the various parts of the System 6. The function of, these, of each of these keys is going to change depending on where you're at in the menus of the timer or within the various sports. Keep in mind, if you ever need to back out of a given menu or screen within Sport Loader or any of the sports, you simply press the key label quit to the right hand side of the soft keys. Your sport loader screen may look a little different uh, depending on which sports you have loaded. The four available sports for the System 6 are swimming, diving, water polo, and pace clock. Videos available that describe the use of each of those sports individually. Uh, swimming and diving just as a note are standard on every System 6 and the other sports are available separately. By looking at the soft keys you can see that this timer has swimming, diving, water polo, and pace clock all four of them currently installed. Below the sports you can see that the soft keys are labeled, there's a soft key labeled install. This function is used to update the various sports as well as the sport little program itself and the firmware of the timer. Since the install procedure has various methods we're going to cover it in its own video. Also covered in the install video will be the printer configuration for those of you who have a newer System 6 that is USB enabled or those of you who have had your System 6 upgraded to USB capability. Below the install button you can see the more key. If I press that we're going to bring up a whole new set of options. Again depending on what sports your timer has installed your soft keys uh, choices may be different. You can now see the diagnostics key which we'll cover shortly. The network key will be covered as part of the install video because it's it's one of the methods for updating the timer followed by the next two keys down are the disk and background image keys. Both of these we'll go over at the end of this video. Um, the final key is that all important shutdown key. The uh, shutdown key is actually it's there for a reason. Um, just like any PC you don't want to just pull the power from it. Uh, it could be in the middle of writing a file or, or doing something uh, of that nature which would potentially corrupt files or, or cause some instability in the timer itself. So the, the shutdown procedure is actually is, is very crucial. Um, there's a label on the upper right hand side of your System 6 timer to denote how to do the proper shutdown but in a sense what you do is you come back to Sport Loader you hit the shutdown key and you answer yes. You wait for the screen to go uh, kind of a, a grayish white in some of the older timers and some of the newer timers you'll actually see the uh, Linux uh, prompt come back up there and it'll have a, a couple different uh, wordings at the bottom but just know that if it's been sitting on the, the Linux prompt for uh, you know uh, 30 seconds or more and it's, and it's not changed that you're good to shut it down. So let's jump right in and start exploring the parts of the Sport Loader program. Let's first take a look at the Diagnostics page. To get here I'm going to press the More key. Now I simply press the Diagnostics key to bring up the utility. Diagnostics utility can actually prove quite valuable in helping troubleshoot problems that may arise. You can now see that the Diagnostics screen is up and we have some new soft key menus to the right. You can also see that in the top diagnostic screen it shows you the current firmware and Sport Loader versions of it that are installed. Those of you astute enough to notice these are not updated and we'll actually go through this on the install procedure on how to update all of these to their latest versions. These are absolutely important because you want to make absolutely certain that your timer is up to date. You can check the download page of our website for current version numbers to verify that you're indeed running the latest and greatest software. Also listed on the next two lines are the serial number and the version of Linux that your timer is running. If your timer is has not been updated in quite some time, you may not see the Linux version listed. Just another clue that you need to get your timer updated. Below those items we see the readouts for current and maximum temperatures. These are the temps inside the timer and I should note that this is the maximum temperature 
that the maximum temperature is not the max allowable temperature, but rather the maximum temp the timer has seen since it was powered on. Think of it as a maximum session temperature. Below the temperature readouts, you'll see uh, keyboard. If you suspected that one of the keyboard keys were not working, you can check them here. Note that when I press a key, it gives you the row and column numbers as well as changes. The uh, on-screen display says you can verify the key's functionality. If I press the same key again, the on-screen on display changes back to its original state. I'm going to skip over the pads and button section for just a minute and we'll look at the power source section. Notice the status is currently listed as plugged in. I'll reach around the back of my timer here real quick and I unplug the power connection. Notice the status changes to battery in the text. System 6 is running on battery appears in the lower left of the screen. When you're in one of the sports, a string will appear somewhere on the screen to alert you that the power supply is either not functioning or has come unplugged. System 6 is absolutely not meant to run solely on battery. The battery is there simply as an emergency backup. While it might be possible to get an hour or more out of the battery, it would be wise to assume that you only have, you know, roughly half hour, 45 minutes until the battery is drained. Also keep in mind that the System 6 only charges the battery when the System 6 is not running, i.e. the power is plugged in and the switch in the back is turned off. At the very bottom of the diagnostic screen you'll see the callouts for serial port test. This test is actually activated via the soft key. Uh, it's only valid if you have the appropriate cable that goes between COM1 and the diving I.O. port on the back of the System 6. Technically speaking you can run this test without the cables here we'll go ahead and push it and you'll notice that I get a failure in both directions of communications COM1 to diving and diving to COM1 technically speaking testing without the appropriate cable at least tells you that there's nothing catastrophically wrong on the COM ports failure I guess in this case could be actually a good thing um, so if without that cable you're gonna you absolutely should expect to see the words fail come up there the configure network key is simply another point of access to the network setups that we'll go over during the install and update video. Enable scoreboard test key is going to is will send the uh, signal up to your scoreboard for your numeric scoreboards and actually light up each line of the scoreboard with every other eight turning on and off, uh, bouncing back and forth. Okay. Now let's get back over to the section for pads and buttons. As you can probably figure out, this area is going to show you what pad and or button is being pressed out on the deck. This does this for both the near and far end connections from, and for up to 12 lanes. So some of you might be realizing this would actually be a really good place to start off your testing before a swim meet. Uh, in the video for meet setup, we'll actually go over this, but it makes great sense to quickly look at this diagnostics page. Um, you can look at it with or without any deck equipment. Without any deck equipment hooked up, you you know it's going to tell you basically that the internals of the timer are okay. There's nothing shorting out without the equipment hooked up. Um, as you hook up your equipment, you can also look at this to make sure that you know nothing, none of the push buttons or touch pads are, are registering when no one is out there touching them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hook up one of our training keypads on the near end connection on the back of the six. Uh, training keypads actually it's, it helps me to use a, to simulate a race pad and one button in this case without having to actually drag out a cable harness or have someone running up and down the deck pushing buttons or hitting pads. Uh, it's going to tell me which uh, the, the which pad or button is being pressed on the on the screen here. Notice in this case I pressed uh, near end lane one pad. If I change the training keypad over to the far end connection, same thing applies. Notice it now says, in this case, far end lane three pad. Um, so this is kind of the, you know, it is a useful tool, uh, the, the diagnostics page. And uh, so now we're going to step over and we're going to actually take a start taking a look at the disk functions within Sport Loader. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to hit the quit button. And we're going to go back down to more. We're going to head over to the disk option right now. The first thing you see is there are three file or three uh, buttons that show up under here: is data files, setup files, and sports programs. First one we're going to go into is data files. Data files handles all of your swim meets. It has the, it's the backup or the the electronic copy of all your swim meet data. Dive meet, same thing. Um, and pace clock and, and water polo logs as well. Um, currently right now I only have well, actually one meat stored on here. Um, 
if there were multiples I can use the up and down buttons to select between them move up and down through the menus I can use the select file button to actually put a you notice it puts a check mark in here um, selects it now I can do a couple things with it at this point um, this is a USB system 6 timer so the option in the menu is store the select files to USB I can click there dump it over to a USB drive I can also delete the selected files um, if I accidentally selected it I can come back up here and unselect it um, if I have a, a, a large number of files that I want to just dump onto a USB drive in this case I can use the select all function and click on that uh, the not a whole lot here other than the things you want to keep in mind uh, or be aware of is the the disk space remaining if you are doing an update and you have an older timer one that has the floppy drive on it and it shows up as as no space available or zero megabytes left you want to make sure that you clear off your meets before you do your update otherwise it, there have been some issues where they'll hang up on an update so that's the real only key here to, to watch on this one so if I hit quit and I get back out of this screen I'm gonna go now into the setup files setup files are basically the instructions for the timer each time it starts into the various sports swimming diving so on and so forth of what it needs to do when it brings up it so think of it as your configuration settings for those various sports uh, for swimming what your pool looks like that sort of thing uh, if you have an instance where you go to load swimming or diving or, or water polo and it tries to go into the sport but then comes back right back out to the sport loader screen something has gone wrong someone has not shut down the timer correctly and has created a, a, a corrupt file one of these setup files um, you can actually go in and just select all of the files um, if I select all of these right now I can then come down here and I can delete them and at that point all my all the potentially uh, corrupted configurations are gone don't worry those files get recreated every time we start up the sport so that's just a little tip there uh, hit and quit I'm gonna go back to the sports programs notice that it shows you what's installed and what's not installed over here also, each one of these screens still shows you the remaining disk space is available. Um, in this case, it's got all the sports with the exception of Synchro are installed. Um, I can delete those files. It doesn't matter because if I do an update, the, the software keys or the license keys are still on the system six timer. So if I did the update, it's going to bring them back onto the, onto the timer. So in the worst case scenario, someone's really shut this thing down wrong or badly. Um, you could go in and delete the individual sports. If deleting the setup files didn't work to get you back into the sports, come in and actually delete the sport shut the timer down reboot it come back in go over the inst go through the install procedure reinstall the software and you're back up and running all right let's uh, now step over and we're gonna go through the last section of the introductory um, introduction to sport loader here so I'm gonna hit the quit button once and twice gets me back to the main set of soft keys I'm gonna hit the more button down here and I'm going to go to background image. Background image, all this simply does is it allows you to change what the desktop image is on your System 6 timer. So if you've got a school logo or anything you want, vacation pictures, whatever you want, you can actually change this. The way you do this on the older System 6s, you would actually put it onto a floppy drive, bring it over, stick the floppy drive in and choose the view files on floppy your your menu choice would change in this case this is a USB timer so if I hit you view files on USB changes over to show you what I have on that USB at that point all I have to do is hit the set file as background and you're done um, at any given time if you want to go back and view what files once you've set a file from a floppy or a USB as the background it automatically saves it onto the console so once you're done you can go back to this view files on console and it would show up you can delete the files there as well you have the option of selecting a particular file just by using the up and down button and deleting it so this concludes the introduction to sport loader um, the next set of videos will actually go over the doing the install or the update to the system six timer. Mm -hmm.